Steam. 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 Hello everyone, my name is Neil and I work on the Steam Education team at Boston Children's Museum. Today I want to show you how to use a free internet resource to make 3D shapes. It's called Tinkercad. At the museum, we use Tinkercad to not only teach visitors about three-dimensional shapes, but to also prepare shapes to print from our 3D printer. For this activity, you will need a computer or laptop with internet access, a web browser, and your creative brain. Once you have made a free account, it'll bring you to what's called your dashboard. That's the screen here. As you can see, I've already been working on some projects, but today we will click Create New Design. It may take a few seconds to load, and then it'll bring you to what's called your work plane. Firstly, this is the name of your file. Tinkercad auto-generates some pretty funny nonsense word names. Uh, I'm going to replace that with, let's call it, Neil's BCM Vehicle. Sorry I wasn't more creative with that. I am sure you will be. This is your work plane. On the left here, you can change your view of the work plane and anything on it by clicking and dragging on this cube. Or you can simply click front and it'll change the front view. Or use these arrows to guide accordingly. Also, this allows you to zoom in and out or create different views that are here orthographic by default. First thing I will do for my vehicle is bring out a box put it in the middle of the workstation. Box is also known as a cube. As soon as I bring the box out to my work, work plane, you will see a menu right here. And this menu uh, allows me to either make the shape a solid or a hole. For now, I want it to be a solid. I'll explain what a hole is later, and I can choose the color. Let me go ahead and choose yellow. I can click on the shape here and let me zoom in. I can click this arrow to hide that for now. See these little dots here? The black dots allow you to stretch just one side of the shape like this. Whereas the white dots allow you to change multiple dimensions at the same time. I'm going to go on ahead and click undo. So I'm back with my original shape. And I want my body of my vehicle to be, let's see. So I'm going to select, I want my body of my vehicle to be 40 long instead of 20 long. Of course, I can just go here and I can change it back to my original 20, or I can change it to 40. This black cone right on top here allows me to raise and lower the shape. I'm going to go ahead and raise my shape to, let's say, 5 millimeters above my work plane. For my next step, I'm going to find some wheels. I'm going to use a tube shape, which I found here in my list of basic shapes. So I will select the tube and I'll bring it out here. And whoa, that's really big, a little bit bigger than I want my wheel to be. So while I'm zoomed in, let me just fix my angle here so it's exactly the right orientation for me. Actually, let me try this. This little dial here allows me to spin it so even though my wheel is still kind of big, I can spin it to be in the same direction that I want it to be. Now, since I'm on a laptop or a computer, I'm going to select this white 
corner dot here and I'm going to hold in the shift key on my keyboard. That makes it so that whenever I shrink the size, it shrinks the entire shape to the same scale. This may be a bit smaller than I want it to be, so let me increase the size a little bit. I want it to be, okay. I'm going to raise that. Let's see, is that going to be, yeah, let's try that. I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to shift where the wheel is. Okay, that wheel is a little bit small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Great, that worked out pretty well. Now, I know obviously that most vehicles are not perfect rectangular prisms and the wheels and tires are not hollow like this, but again, we are just having fun making some basic 3D shapes and this is just a way for me to teach you how to start. From here, you can go on your own little adventure of creating 3D shapes. Now I have two shapes that look like I've sort of put them together, but I can still select just one shape at a time if I want to. I'm going to select this one wheel I've created, and over here this is a duplicate button. So once I've selected the wheel here by clicking on it, I can hit duplicate. Now you're probably wondering, hey I duplicated this, where is the duplicated shape? It's actually sharing the same space that the initial wheel is sharing. So what I'm going to do is use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move the duplicate away from the original shape. Now, as you can see, I can position it where I want. If you want more than two wheels, go for it. If you want the wheels to be bigger, go for it. Now, you change the view you can see that I have two wheels, kind of one in the front, one in the back. I don't really know where the front is or where the back is yet, but I'm going to make the left side the front of the vehicle for me, and the right side will be the back. I can select this one. I can then hold down Shift and select the other wheel. Now I have selected both. I can hit Duplicate again. And then when I change my view, it's the same thing where the Duplicate is in the same exact spot as the original. I'm going to use my arrow keys again, and voila! There are the duplicated wheels, and now there are four wheels on my vehicle. I'm going to raise this slightly. There, I prefer that. Okay, and now there are wheels on the vehicle. For my next step, I would like to create a windshield in the front so I know exactly where the front of my vehicle is. For that, I'm going to select a wedge, which is also in the basic shapes area. I'm going to use this wedge to cut out a shape from the front of the vehicle. And right now that may not be too obvious to you what that means. So what I did just now is I turned the wedge along the flat plane and then I'm also going to turn it 180 degrees. Basically I'm going to flip it upside down. Again I could have just put the number in there but I decided to spin it manually. Let's get a front view here. Firstly what I'm going to do is now that I have the shape selected I'm going to make it a hole. To make it a hole means you're going to use that to take away space from another shape. First thing I'm going to do is raise it I want to make sure it's, oops, see, it's not quite aligned. So I'm going to use my arrow keys here to align it with the front of my vehicle. And I may need to touch that up again a little bit later. But once I have aligned it that way, I'm going to use my arrow keys again to 
kind of merge it in with, you see it's still not aligned. I'm going to merge it in with the front of my vehicle here. Perfect. And let's see, am I happy with this? No, I'm going to move it to the left and I'm going to lower it even more. Okay, I like that. Now this is the really cool fun step. I am going to just take my mouse cursor and select the entire thing. Since I'm on a Windows, I can also uh, use Control A and that selects everything. I think on a Mac you might need to hit Command A. But once I have selected everything, this is the magic button, Group. And you see when I group it, it took that wedge shape, which was right here, because it was a hole, it created a hole and carved out that exact part from the front of my vehicle. So now you have something that looks a bit like a van with four wheels. So I'm getting there. This is, this is a really good start. In fact, I think there's only one more thing I'd like to do so that this is not too long of a video and I would like you to be creative on your own and try your own thing. Since this is the Boston Children's Museum van, I'm going to place some text. And once again, whoa, that is huge. Since I've selected the text, this menu appears once again. I can change what the text says, and I'm going to write B C M, which stands for Boston Children's Museum. And I am going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and scale this downward so that it's not as huge. Again, I have these little dials which allow me to spin the shape. I am going to spin this by 90 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to raise it because I want to put the letters BCM on the side of the van. They still seem a little large, so I'm going to hold shift again and I'm going to scale it down. Let's see where that is. Okay. So I can use, again, the arrow keys, which are really nifty, to push it in. I'm going to lower it a little bit, push it to the right, my arrow key, and there you have it. You have a couple options here. I can either have it be, you know, popping out the side with a bit of texture like that, or I can make it a hole so it's kind of like carved into the side of the vehicle. Either way, whether it's popping out or carved in, I'm going to once again select everything and press group. And there is my BCM vehicle, which I'm very proud of. A few cool things you could do in addition to this, just to give you some ideas. You could make some small cubes, put them in the front of the vehicle here and make them holes so that they're headlights, or you can have them popping out. They still look like headlights. You could uh, try and put individuals in the front here, and that could be a fun little challenge. Uh, you could also put some sort of a turbo engine boost on the back. Uh, you could have people sitting on the top. The basic shapes is just a starting point. There's so many other options here. You can So there's my vehicle. I hope you had fun and you found this interesting. And remember, this is just the start. There's so much more you can do. Uh, if you make something really cool, please take a screenshot and share it with us on social media. And continue to follow all the videos we'll be sending out on how to do cool things at home. And uh, please do take advantage of all the resources on the Boston Children's Museum website. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.